let's get ready for Zumba in a really fast, like, scenario, because I'm running late, as per usual, because I took a nap. <laughs>
that my time will come. In January 1980, I was 18 years old and I was taking care of my two-year-old, my son's father and I. We were living together. In Toledo, his name was Bud. Bud was a meat cutter at a local grocery store. We didn't have a car, so I would walk to the store to meet him so he wouldn't have to walk by himself. That night, Bud's brother Don was with my son. Around 12.30, I walked down Seeger Street. It took me about 15 minutes to walk to the store. I met Bud and we went back the same way that I came. We were within 20 feet of our house. I seen a man across the street in a green army jacket and a ski cap. He started walking a little bit faster and then he started coming across the street. My heart started beating really fast. And I looked at Bud and he just said, don't worry, you're with me. He came up to us. He was a black man with the beard. And the next thing I knew, he pulled a handgun. It was the first gun I've ever seen in my life. It crossed my mind that this is a robbery. We offered Bud's watch, wallet, just so he would leave us alone. He put his hand out for us to give him the stuff and he just stuck it in his pocket. I thought, okay, he's gonna let us leave, that's all he wanted. And then he threw two ski caps at us and told us to put them over our face. The man said, they'll shoot you if you start to run. I have the ski mask over my face. It wasn't totally blacked out. You could see through the fabric. It was very dark. I didn't know what was going to happen. And then I remember in Bud's wallet was our address where our son was at. All I could think of was he was going to kill me and then go and get my son. And that's when he made us walk down an alley. Walking through the alley. Walking through the abandoned garage. Around the corner. He pushed the gun in Bud's back and told us to stop right here. I was able to look a little bit then because I lifted my mask up. Someone was coming. He was very tall and he was husky. And he had an army jacket on too. He waved to the first one and my heart dropped. That's when I realized there was two of them my heart started beating even faster. About eight months before Cheryl and Bud were attacked, there was a young couple, Sandra Pogorski and Tommy Gordon, that were sitting in a car. Two black men forced their way into the car and took them to a field in western Lucas County. Eventually, was able to get help, and Sandra told police 
One of them was bearded, as she said. One person called the other abductor Tony. There was nothing else for the police to go on, and the case eventually went cold. They just told us to go into the garage. Bud was trying to stay cool so he wouldn't agitate them. I was hysterical. My heart hurt from being scared. I pleaded with them to please let us go. And they said no. That my time will come. They put the gun to Bud's head. And then the first one had a knife to my throat. The second one told the first one... I will go first. And that's when I was told to take my pants down. I was in shock and I, I refused. And that's when he took the knife deeper into my throat. I heard the gun click back. And that's when I knew they were going to kill me right then. Part of me wished that they would just kill me. raped by both of them. I couldn't catch my breath. My heart was pounding so fast it felt like I could have had a heart attack. When they were done, one of the guys told Bud to hold me tight because it would be the last time that he would hold me. I was petrified. I was gonna raise my son. That's all I could think about. We just kept telling each other we loved each other and things were gonna be okay, even though we were pretty sure they weren't. Ten days before Cheryl was attacked, police find the naked body of the County Sue Thompson in a culvert out in rural Lucas County. I could not have come. I just picked up a piece of wire and uh, started choking it. To this point, police did not necessarily make a connection with the Gordon and Pagorski abduction, but this was another young woman who was taken off the streets of Toledo and ended up dead. was decomposed and so the authorities were not able to get much forensic evidence there wasn't anything that the authorities could use to try to track down any particular suspects
I was bleeding all over the place. Perfect. I had a hard time breathing. Sweaty. I'm supposed to be sweaty till I get to the workouts and I'm already sweaty. Everything 15 minutes later, we are ready to go. Sweet.